Okay, um, so um, my name is Tom Hudson. I am a professor of medicine at Texas A&M College of Medicine, the director of the uh, GU Oncology Program for Texas Oncology at Baylor Sammons Cancer Center and the co-chair of the Urologic Cancer Research and Treatment Center at Baylor University Medical Center. I also um, am the phase one director, early drug uh, development program for Texas Oncology for Baylor, and I co-lead the uh, primer, P-R-I-M-E-R, -E Early Drug Development Program for Sarah Cannon Research Institute. The um, uh, renal cell carcinoma as a topic for drug development has, um, has had a checkered past um, prior to 2003, where, where renal cell cancer, when it came back and spread or became uh, metastatic, um, it was not really treatable. The standard of care at that time was interferon with response rates of around 10 to 15 percent. So the majority of patients had no benefit from therapy. And at the turn of the millennium, it was on the short list of cancers where we didn't really have effective therapy. Based upon advances in, in science in the late 1990s, um, the discovery of, of a genetic um, abnormality that resulted in the, the majority of the cases of, of renal cell cancer resulted in the development of targets uh, to drug against. And, and this inspired uh, through partnership with pharmaceutical companies, the development of, of a first generation of therapies, which took the cancer from untreatable to treatable. And it was one of the major advances of that decade. Um, and so we had a handful of drugs that would, would allow patients um, to, to battle their cancer and it turned it into a chronic illness for many patients. And the survivals became uh, three to five times longer than what they would have been before those therapies. We've um, now are well into the the um, age of a second generation of therapies. The um, the second generation of therapies have taken the advances from the first generation and and have um, have continued to um, target um, VEGF, which is an important target, but also target other proteins that are expressed in cancer cells that may lend the cancer to become resistant to the first generation drugs. Um, and, and have allowed us to, to push the field further with even greater benefit, not only in initial therapy, but as subsequent lines of therapy for patients. We also saw the emergence of a new class of drugs called checkpoint inhibitors or immune therapies. And, and obviously the discovery resulted in the Nobel Prize a few years back for that discovery. But it seems like half of all solid tumors um, can benefit from, from an antibody that prevents the um, negative interaction between the cancer cell and, and the patient's innate immune system. And kidney cancer is one of those. And so we saw um, checkpoint inhibitors such as um, Keytruda, Opdivo. I mean, there's a variety of them that have come to market and kidney cancer has benefited from those therapies. And we're at the point now where we've combined our newer generation oral drugs against VEGF with some of these checkpoint inhibitors, and we've reached a point where we at least have additive benefit or potentially synergistic benefit as initial therapy. And so um, what we've seen now as a standard of care around the world has been most patients should receive some type of checkpoint inhibitor combined with an oral therapy, um, or alternatively, a checkpoint inhibitor combined with another immune therapy. And we think of these two broadly um, as an IO-IO combination or an IO-TKI. At ASCO, what I presented on was one of several, one of these several IO-TKI regimens that have become standard of care. And the IO-TKI regimen that I discussed was lenvatinib pembrolizumab, which um, we were able to present our four-year pre-specified analysis on. That drug had already been pre presented a two years earlier has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine and has resulted in its regulatory approval as initial therapy for patients around the world. But what we're able to present on now is, is this further follow-up um, with four-year survival data that reinforces the robustness of the benefit that we saw initially, allows patients and clinicians to feel comfortable that indeed this, this regimen has stood the test of time and we see no new safety signals with the regimen. So, so we can say without a fact that, that lenvatinib pembrolizumab is one of our most active, if not the most active regimen. We have no comparative trials to make a, a really more substantiated claim, but it is one of the most active regimens we have in that 
becomes a major treatment choice for patients with kidney cancer. 